So, uh, in the borders of this cooperation of main environment, uh, on this topic, we should discuss first chapter of it, like about value and influence of some harmful, dangerous factors on the state of health and territory as well, which can be dangerous for the environment. So, among these uh, dangerous, harmful factors, there can be, of course, this one which we have mentioned on the previous class, to which belong these four types, physical, chemical, biological, psychophysiological. Physical can be subdivided on mechanical, radiation, thermal one. Discussing this physical as the first chapter today is dedicated to ionizing and non-ionizing types of irradiation and uh, talking about its origin and nature, we can say that, of course, this is different kind of energy and power which can be transformed from one type into another. Sometimes mechanical uh, power can be transferred through magnetic fields of the um, generators into the electricity and reversibly electrical power of the engines, for example, which are used nowadays very widely in different types of vehicles like scooters. Uh, as well, electrical cars can be transversed into the mechanical kind of uh, energy. Besides, different chemical reactions can be responsible for formation of the uh, light and uh, as well thermal energy. And reversibly, thermal energy can be responsible for improving different chemical reactions, right? <coughs> And besides, in different natural processes, they can be present this nuclear energy as well, which we will uh, see in next, uh, let's say, slides. So uh, when we talk about uh, different kinds of uh, irradiations, uh, some of them we can detect and some of them can be uh, somehow accepted consciously by our organism, sometimes unconsciously. Uh, among them there is one kind of power which is not visible and uh, which we cannot be informed somehow else just by using special devices because our organism doesn't have any receptors for this. To them belong ionizing irradiation. What does it mean? Of course it's in the name of this kind of power. And uh, that is that this kind of <coughs> dangerous harmful factors are possible uh, are able to make from stable molecular they can make them uh, into the form of ions which are of course in this case will be much more highly active on positive and negative ion so when we talk about uh, for example our organism which consists mostly from the water because its uh, quantity in our organism achieves up to 80% in newborns and around 69-70% in adults and is used for different needs. Of course, it's the main component of different fluids, biological fluids of our body. Besides, of course, it's uh, highly presented in the cells and is the environment where there can be uh, possible different chemical reactions as in the cells, as in the interstitial tissues, etc, etc. And of course, uh, lots of negative effects will be connected with the question of radiolysis of this substance. Now, water H2O formula, which will be uh, ionized on positively charged ion of uh, hydrogen and uh, negatively charged ion of hydroxyl group and uh, most of after that next chain reactions will be prom uh, promoted by these hydroxyl groups so uh, what's the origin of this kind of force uh, of course in the very beginning there is presence of uh, the process of the decay of so-called radionuclides. What are they radionuclides? It's different kinds of uh, elements 
which are mainly present in the end of the table of the element of Mendeleev, it's, uh, which belong mostly to the heavy metals. There are lots of them as, uh, nat in, as natural components in different areas of our planet. And uh, during this process of self-decay of these radionuclides, there will be observed formation of uh, next generations of radionuclides, which are possible to be self-terminated, to be self-decayed with the next as well formation with smaller, 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 till some stable forms, for example, helium, uh, for example, uh, uranium, 2000. Uh, 238 can be in the very end can be finalized up to formation of stable form of the lead uh, so uh, all over our earth planet there can be present uh, that areas which contain bigger concentration of these radioisotopes and some of them are used uh, for our needs uh, for different branches of the <coughs> industry uh, generally we can say uh, besides that radionuclides statement radionuclides there is so called radioisotopes uh, of course uh, is isotope you know what is it right it's the same element that means that uh, the number and place it's in the elemental table is uh, made by the presence of some quantity of protons inside of nucleus but quantity of neutrons can be different smaller or bigger quantity and uh, in this case they will be these atoms will be not so stable and will be able to self destroy it with formation of new radioisotopes of some uh, elements which are a little bit higher in this uh, elements stable plus there will be purified this energy uh, energy and different wastes of this kind of process actually it looks like explosion of this atom right so during that this um, connections energy uh, which unites protons neutrons inside of necklace will be purified in a view of different kind of energy actually it's electromagnetic waves and of course there will be wastes like different particle forms of this kind of uh, power so isotopes yes radio isotopes in this case uh, have got as we said different quantity of the neutrons and due to that atomic uh, weight will be different for these radionuclides but they as i said will be less stable and will be more likely self-destructed uh, so when we talk about types of ionizing irradiation we, we can use two approaches first approach is uh, defining <coughs> does that type of ionizing irradiation contain some charge Due to that uh, approach, they can be divided on charged forms to which belong alpha, beta particles and streams of protons uh, and streams of electrons as well uh, and to non-charged belong electromagnetic waves and neutrons, streams of neutrons, which are quite dangerous as well. Another approach we can say what are these kind of uh, ionizing irradiation from the position of that physical character. So due to that they can be physically like looks like particles, corpusculars to which belong alpha particles, beta particles, protons and neutrons and electromagnetic waves. This is whole spectrum of electromagnetic waves. In this case, will be observed uh, all types of this kind of energy will be purified intensively, especially if this chain reaction of some bigger quantity of that elements is available, which will, um, which is very likely, can be observed uh, on the.
the sun processes and um, atomic bomb explosion or some other accidents on radiologically dangerous object. When we talk modestly about the types, alpha particles. Alpha particles, it's, it looks like the nucleus of the helium without electrons. Sometimes there can be observed presence of one electron. Uh, positively, always positively charged. This is connection of two protons and two neptrons, so quite big particles, and they have got the highest ionizing ability among all types of ionizing irradiation. If we will compare this kind of ionizing irradiation with gamma rays, in this case gamma rays can uh, make in one centimeter of space where it goes up to two, three pairs of ions, at the same length, alpha particles are able to produce 20, 30 thousand of pairs of ions, so very high ionizing ability. But luckily, uh, not very high penetrating ability for this alpha particle observed due to its big, uh, big size, comparing big size with uh, some other particles, and besides, they are heavier. Compar comparing with that. They can be spread, for example, in the, from the focus of atomic bomb explosion, not uh, over uh, five, uh, up to one kilometer in most cases, while beta particles are able to fly up to five, eight kilometers from the epicenter of the atomic bomb explosion. Of course, gamma rays much more bigger distances, that's why they bring uh, higher hazards due to the high penetrating ability and higher uh, ability to spread in different directions. Beta particles. Beta particles has got uh, as well quite high ionizing ability, quite high penetrating abilities, uh, and uh, they can be or positively or negatively charged. Generally, these uh, this type of ionizing irradiation, it streams of electrons. In this case, they are minus charged and uh, or streams of protons or positrons as well can be named. Like it's, of course, will be positively charged in this case. Talking about sources of ionizing irradiation, most of them uh, are localized in natural conditions. Um, around 75% of the sources are belong to natural sources of the of ionizing irradiation and uh, in this case uh, besides they are divided on uh, so-called earth irradiation these are different places uh, on the earth where they can be in bigger concentration besides in lots of other natural objects they can be, but mainly in some somewhere deeply in the ground and during our uh, anthropogenical influences they can be mined for our uh, needs. Um, lots of these radionuclides, uh, like besides uranium, polonium, plutonium, uh, thorium, radon, uh, lots of them are located and. Uh, makes that or other irradiation. Of course, they can go upwards into the atmosphere, can be transferred with the movement of this atmospheric plus. They can be circulated with water in natural condition, but of course, uh, it uh, happens not in big quantity because we have survived, we still live on our planet and lived on our planet in the same conditions for 100,000 uh, of years and we have survived, yes. Uh, besides that, uh, different places uh, of uh, and sources of ionizing irradiation are named so-called internal irradiation, which comes from different uh, walls of buildings because for their purposes I use the sources from nature. And of course, uh, one more source, it's cosmic irradiation, which comes from different uh, objects uh, from the space, which can fall down in a view of uh, radionuclides. Besides, they come as well as different kinds of irradiation of electromagnetic origin. Of course, the main generator of this kind of irradiation is sun. 
in our cosmic system, in our galaxy. It comes from the sun, because sun is like big atomic reactor that perform different uh, thermo uh, nuclear reactions due to that it's shining because it produces all spectrum uh, lots of like atomic explosion on its surface and that's why it's shining and we still live with that kind uh, of force of course, na uh, besides natural, there are lots of sources which are localized uh, on our planet of artificial origin. Uh, among them, medical sources are among them are on the first place. Around 11% medical sources. Because we use lots of them for our needs for diagnostical procedures like x-ray examination, like uh, computer tomography sources besides uh, there exists uh, different radionuclides as well uh, for the treatment of different diseases mainly oncological diseases like radiotherapy before or after surgical operation or instead of surgical operation as the single type of therapy for these people and it's helpful for them and helps to fight with the cancer. Uh, besides, of course, to them belong different nuclear power plants or atomic power stations as well can be named. Uh, when we talk about our country, Ukraine, we can say that we have got actively 15 atomic reactors located on four atomic nu nuclear power plant. Nowadays, as you know, there is high risk with the Polizhia uh, atomic electrical station because it's occupied by Russian military forces and they make every day different provocations while they are uh, shooting uh, into this area, blaming our country that we do this. And of course there is uh, quite high risk of the accident on this uh, nuclear power plant uh, with the risk of extras and contamination of the environment. Like it happened um, around 40 years ago on Chernobyl atomic power station when it has one reactor has been exploded and the contamination was observed even uh, in uh, the Western Europe countries, in the Northern Europe countries like on Scandinavian ones, Sweden, Norway, Finland. In these countries, there has been observed increasing of the background level of irradiation. Background level of irradiation is like general component of these all sources of ionizing irradiation as cosmic as natural one. So, of course, uh, these reactors are protected. The walls um, which is surrounding, defensive walls which is surrounding active uh, active zone of the reactor uh, the thickness of these walls is around 10 meters of concrete so of course it's highly protected against some shooting or wreckage but anyway there is a risk there are the risks while uh, describing this type uh, of force which is named electromagnetic waves or energy which is intensively purified during this nuclear decay. Um, um, in this case, there will be observance of presence uh, of all kinds of whole spectrum of electromagnetic waves. As you see, very short period, very small uh, period in this uh, spectrum is for visible light or for visible electro spectrum of electromagnetic waves, which can be detected by our retina. Uh, as you know the rainbow colors in the middle there is located green color and into one side there goes blue and on the other side yellow like colors of our Ukrainian flag. Mixture of these two colors give us green, yes? And going in both directions these colors become a little bit uh, intensive and dark. So uh, yellow after that there goes orange and red and in the opposite side, uh, besides 
uh, that blue color will become ivory and finally is violet. The seven colors of uh, the rainbow can be observed during diffraction, that physical process of uh, dividing of uh, simple light into the color types. When it will be uh, mirrored somehow angled by the water in, in case of rain, during rain and besides it can be observed uh, artificially when it's performed due when the light goes through the um, prism. And uh, of course I this light will be highly intensive. In case of atomic bomb explosion, it's highly intensive. It's forbidden to look directly on it. Besides, this visible range of light as well comes from different sources of artificial origin, uh, which are used for different ironing of different metals between themselves during building processes, making a pipes as well. Uh, so there will be observed of presence of this spectrum, which is visible mainly, but of course, besides there will be presence as of other types, which are quite close to this spectrum. So uh, besides sun, of course, as well, it's quite dangerous to look on it because it's dangerous for our retina. When we talk about other uh, types of ionizing uh, and non-ionizing radiation, when we characterizing this type of force of so electromagnetic waves can be as well uh, as ionizing as they doesn't have ability to ionize. So uh, those which are above ultraviolet to which belong, ultraviolet actually is divided on two types, hard and soft, not only X-rays, but ultraviolet as well, soft and hard. So soft still doesn't have ability to ionize and it doesn't penetrate too deep into through skin, while hard ultraviolet, uh, which can come from sun as well, but main a dosage of this hard ultraviolet can be blocked by ozone layer. Uh, and ozone layer, as you know, will be a little bit less uh, density, uh, has lesser density in high, uh, in height, like in mountains. Besides, these mountains are always with snow, which can reflect much more easily this electromagnetic wave. So that's why uh, it, you should, we should protect our skin uh, and eyes in these regions. Besides, near the seaside, it has got higher concentration as well. Better to protect eyes with the glasses, with protective glasses, to decrease the negative influence of ultraviolet on our retina. Besides, of course, X-rays and gamma rays. Both of them are ionizing uh, irradiation. All other types, ultraviolet, visible range and all other types, infrared spectrum, microwaves, radio waves, doesn't have ability to ionize, but they have ability aggressively and dangerously influence on us. For example, uh, microwaves range, it's highly intensive uh, spectrum of electromagnetic waves, which uh, uh, on some literature sources uh, is connected with increased quantity of tumors of the brain because of bigger spread of uh, mobile phones which belong to these sources of microwaves. Besides to them belong microwave ovens, different other devices which are used for treatment uh, in physiotherapeutical department and different other uh, machines which are used for um, civil uh, aircraft and uh, military needs as well. All these types of spectrum will be observed, uh, as I said, in atomic bomb explosions. So presence of this uh, range of radio waves, TV, uh, TV set waves, spectrum, microwaves will be responsible during atomic bomb explosion for so-called electromagnetic impulse which is response uh, after which will be uh, possible to destroy different computer chips and uh, in this case uh, they will not be able to be somehow controlled and they will be failed so flight will not be possible plane can crash can fall down ships uh, on the marine ships will not be able to float or, because lots of this vehicles as well cars 
that are used microchips, microcomputers, which very possibly if they will be turned on at the moment and if they go into this range of atomic bomb explosion, in most cases it's range uh, up to 5-8 kilometers around the place uh, epicenter of the bomb explosion, they will be uh, destroyed. That's why um, high possibility of uh, these crashes. Infrared spectrum we cannot see, but we can detect this kind of electromagnetic spectrum by our receptors of the temperature, so thermoreceptors, because infrared beams, it's uh, feeling of the heat. Besides, our body as well can produce this kind of electromagnetic waves as well, which is used by different uh, devices for night vision, which can detect them. So the sources to which we have discussed uh, lots of them belong. Uh, as you see, X-ray gamma rays has got smaller uh, lengths of the wave and uh, due to that they are highly penetrable comparing with TV spectrum or radio waves which has got very long waves and uh, that's why they come on big distances and they can be spread this signal for information for example, yes, all over our planet. Uh, this one, which are microwaves, has got smaller range of spread, of course, uh, and uh, but high dangerous danger for us as well and for different natural processes they can bring. About penetrating abilities, short scam, so alpha particles can be blocked by simple sheet of paper, beta particles mostly uh, are not able to go through aluminum plate, uh, they, that's why they can protect us against this kind, but most danger bring us, uh, in this case, gamma rays and streams of neutrons, which can go through even through the plates of lead, uh, and, uh, but, uh, so plates of lead can be used uh, for that purposes, like when uh, you work in radiological departments, this element must be present as in the glass uh, which dividing that operational room uh, of radio of radio di radiological diagnostics or radiological treatment department from the working place of radiologists and of course they must uh, there must be used concrete walls as well which can block this kind of energy against uh, Again, and block its negative consequences, yes. Uh, of course, in lots of cases, very high danger brings these radionuclides, which can come in our inside of our body and can be the sources of production of all these alpha, beta particles, gamma rays, X rays, streams of neutrons or protons. Uh, while during process of this decay, already inside of the tissues of our organism. And of course, in this case, alpha particle will be responsible, will have high responsibility, beta particles mainly, and gamma rays uh, as well. Uh, when we talk about the accidents on um, the objects of the industry, this type of um, accidents can be divided on two types. There can be a radiational in, uh, accident or nuclear accident. Um, the sources of uh, this kind of force and the accident has been observed uh, for last maybe 50 years, uh, maybe even more, when there has been started the usage of this kind of power for peaceful needs as well. Besides peaceful, there has been invented, as you know, this atomic bomb before that. And uh, there has been made lots of testing explosions in different areas of our planet, so they brought contamination to these places. Uh, most well-known and uh, most dangerous uh, accidents has been observed on two atomic power stations, like in 1986 in Chernobyl and in uh, 2011 in Fukushima. Where it, where it has the seventh level of danger, 
like huge accident when there was extras of this radionuclides outside and they are spread on big distances from that place. And before that, as you see, there has been different accidents with smaller danger for the environment. So two groups, uh, two groups, as I said, there can be radiational accident. Mostly, they uh, the without danger for the for the extras of these consequences outside that object and nuclear accident when there is presence of such. Uh, contamination of environment not only on this object but beside the, its borders so uh, due to that of course there will be possibility for violation of uh, normal uh, biological processes due to damage of its representatives when we talk about its effect again, so of course, um, atomic bomb explosion is most picturesque. But besides that, during atomic nuclear plant, of course, there will be explosion due to going out, out of control of these chain reactions of nuclear origin. Of course, there will be presence of explosive wave, which has physical destructing force. And if we will compare um, that kind of bombs, uh, which has ability which has, uh, let's say, a quantitative uh, possible energy of destruction, uh, which is measured in the weight, let's say, of the bomb or in the equivalent of that explosive material which is used in simple bombs. Uh, when simple bombs, for example, the, those one which was thrown by Russian army on our, um, on our cities, in most cases, it bordered between 250 kilograms, 500 kilograms bombs, which uh, can fall on the um, high buildings and uh, buildings of flats uh, on nine floors, and uh, all nine floors will be destroyed by this 500. Sometimes even 250 kilogram bombs can be destroyed. Now you can imagine about atomic bomb which uh, has the same weight, physical weight, like uh, five, 500 or 100 kilograms, but that uh, energy of explosion equals to 20, 30,000 of kilograms. So kilotons, sometimes even megatons. There can be that kind of uh, hydrogen uh, type of the bomb. So highly destructive this kind of weapon is highly destructive because of presence of this explosive wave right besides of course there will be a presence of all spectrum of electromagnetic waves as i said there will be an emission of the light which is highly concentrated and can burn because of presence of this infrared spectrum as well if it's long uh, distance uh, from the area of explosion <coughs> it can burn retina if to look on it directly without some protecting glasses, which are very dark. Uh, of course, besides that, there will be presence of this ionizing radiation. As we said, alpha beta particles doesn't spread too on big distances from the place, but gamma irradiation streams of neutrons can go outside the, the epicenter of explosion on quite big distances. For estimation of uh, that or other level of, let's say, damaging uh, consequences, there are used different units for its estimation, among which there is system unit of influence on the uh, organism of man or some other uh, living uh, organism, its grace, and uh, its uh, extra system dose, which is measured in rad. Besides bar, one bar, as well, the dose of ionizing radiation that creates the same biological effect as dose of one rod of X-ray or gamma ray E radiation, and as well Z word as uh, the equivalent exposed absorbed dose uh, unit of estimation. Modately, this uh, scale uh, of transfer is present in that uh, study material how they can be transferred into one, in one into another. 
So, uh, in case of uh, atomic nuclear power plants, there can be, uh, after some uh, processes of uh, nuclear decay, there can be presence of the wastes, uh, let's say the garbage, which should be uh, after that somehow taken off and should be protectively stored uh, in special places, in special devices, actually with some cooling of these devices, because uh, that energetic uh, poten potential will be less and they should be substituted with new elements, with new sources of uranium mainly. There will be presence of more than 400 of radionuclides. All of them can be the sources of beta particles, uh, alpha beta particles, contamination, all other types of ionizing uh, gamma, let's say, sources as well of contamination and risks. So that's why they should be protectively stored for a hundred of years, actually, because uh, even some of them can have still uh, ability to divide up to thousands of years. Uh, when we talk about uh, most risk among them, uh, there are some of them, but even from this list we can talk about three main, which are responsible for most negative effects in our organism. It's iodine, isotope of iodine-131, it's strontium and it's cesium. Uh, iodine can be... Uh, uh, can get inside of organisms through breathing tract with different, all of them actually can go through breathing tract. So for at least most easiest, even most easiest uh, facilities of defense like simple medical filtering mask. Uh, of course, better to use some special respirators which contain a special filter and cover the area of uh, mouth and nose much more. Uh, better in this case. <coughs> Besides strontium, uh, as well, it has got, uh, as you see, there is half life. Half life is period of half decade. That means that half of the quantity of these radionuclides, when they got inside of the tissues, inside of the organism, will have such period of uh, their self destruction. So for example, for iodine, after 8 days, half of these elements will be self-destroyed. So, after 16 days, 16 days, they will be totally excreted outside the organism. Instead of strontium, which can be, uh, as you see, on quite much more bigger uh, quantity of years, up to 54 uh, years uh, only after that period, we can say that it has been totally evacuated uh, and excreted from the organism and cesium 60 years full life and uh, let's say full time of its destruction so it's quite long period cesium can be uh, stored mainly in the muscles uh, and uh, that's why it's connecting with proteins and uh, proteins are responsible for its ex excretion outside the organism that's why there is uh, there must be used uh, of highly proteinized food uh, products for strontium. Strontium counteracting for its place in the bones. Uh, it's counteracting with calcium. That's why they should be uh, taking much more, um, let's say, quality food of, uh, that means dairy products, milk products, which contain this calcium in bigger concentration to fight for its place, for its normal place in the bones. And iodine is more tropic for thyroid glands. Uh, that's why at first two weeks, minimally two weeks, but better one uh, month, they should be prescribed taking of this normal iodine uh, medicines, which contain iodine, which will be uh, more possibly stored in a thyroid gland. And this iodine, which wasn't, which is radionuclide, belong to this radioactive, uh, will be excreting more likely and more quickly from the organism. Of course, different ways of getting inside of the organism, not only breathing tract, but with water and with food, fraud, with food products uh, can get into the organism and they can be dangerous, can be responsible for different uh, pathological effects. Most uh, of this dangerous, uh, dangerous accidents, of course, uh, that or other territory will be 
contaminated on some territory which is localized quite nearestly to the to its uh, places to this accident on these uh, atomic power plations, uh, plants or uh, after uh, bomb explosions on some territory it should be um, prevent protect let's say um, forbidden to be uh, used as a settlement area or some other industrial needs it should it shouldn't be used because that area is contaminated of course different zones is used for that and in some zones there is obligatory evacuation of the people outside that place and that uh, on some more safe territories of course for that purposes there are used different dosimeters and genometers which helps us to detect that to our le other level of contamination <coughs> And uh, the borders of that or other do uh, zone will be uh, used that or other measures directed on protection of population, civil population as well, industrial objects should be stored and somehow um, conservised on that territory to avoid its getting out somewhere on that peaceful, let's say, non-contaminated areas. When we talk about uh, defensive measure, protect, protecting measure, of course, besides uh, evacuation, right at the moment of the atomic bomb explosion, we should hide, uh, we should protect ourselves in some defensive shelters. After that, some period of time, there shouldn't be, uh, so we should have some water reservoirs uh, which wasn't contaminated yet uh, food products as well which should be packed uh, in specific specifically let's in plastic bags that inside this will not be in that case contaminated with this radionuclides as well should be used uh, of this iodine prevention when we talk about uh, medical um, biological consequences important question biological consequences of course, as you see how it can be spread. Right at the moment, uh, these masses of ground with the radionuclides, with, small, with big particles, smaller particles, will go upwards sometimes one, two kilometers above the ground. Main part of these heavy particles due to gravitation will be falling down very closely to the area of the accident. But some of them, of course, can be transported with uh, the movement of the atmosphere on long, very uh, long distances and can fall down on the ground with different falls as rain, as snow, as gale, different types of spread of them can be observed and that other territory can be contaminated. The plants, the animals which live, uh, which using these plants uh, as well, different agricultural uh, products and um, water representatives like different fish or some other objects which can be used after that for our feeding needs so some of them can be contaminated we should be we should remember about that there should be used proper um, culinary let's say dietetic influence when we make some dishes So, uh, influence on the biological um, biolog or representatives of biosphere, including our uh, human, uh, let's say, uh, species, of course, there can be two types of influence, direct and non-direct. Direct is made by direct uh, damage of the organelles and especially DNA by that or other type of ionizing irradiation alpha, beta particles, gamma rays, doesn't matter. They will be directly striking some parts of the chromosome that can be somehow damaged, destroyed. There can be decreased or increased quantity of chromosomes. Of course, non-direct mechanism, as I said, due to these processes of radiolyzing of water into H group and OH minus group, which will be mainly responsible for the formation of different substances in the cell and its organelles will be destroyed by that negative uh, toxic substances or ideologically active as well. Uh, there is rule of uh, Bergogne-Tribonidou, uh, which said that uh, 
mainly there will be uh, less, let's say, defensible. Less, de uh, less defended, there are such uh, cells which has not high level of uh, dividing and differentiating, plus they, ha they have big speed uh, of reproducting activity. That means a very high speed of dividing. What are these tissues and where are these cells? We can say that uh, lots of them, uh, it's epithelial tissue. It's bone marrow. Besides epithelial tissue, as you know, it's skin, it's mucous covers, uh, it's covering different uh, internal organs, uh, plus they, this kind of tissue is localized practically everywhere in our body. Epithelial tissue is in the different glands of internal external uh, secretion, besides it's uh, covering uh, and presents the capillars, it's one layer of epithelial tissue, etc., etc. Of course, high level of dividing is present in the gonads of the males uh, and um, as well it's highly dangerous. So when we talk about uh, the organs which has got uh, the highest risk of damage, it's what? It's bone marrow, of course. It's a uh, gland of the uh, female, that is mammary gland. Of course, uh, males gonads, testicles. Uh, besides different epithelial tissues uh, to which belong uh, high concentrated, it's highly concentrated in the lung tissue as well, pleural uh, cavity, uh, besides parietal, uh, parietal um, layer as well belong to epithelial tissue, bowels, in this case it has got, it has got that or other damages. Generally we can say that uh, these biological effects are stochastic and non-stochastic. To stochastic another name is non-deterministic because these effects can happen not only because of influence of uh, radioactivity or ionizing irradiation but besides they can be uh, after different chemical influences, thermal influences, mechanical harmful uh, forces as well they can be because of that. In the basement of their formation and origin is mutation of the DNA and uh, this part of the cell. And next generation of the cell can become abnormal with uh, bigger possibility for non-controllable dividing that is development of cancer. So this effect is named cancerogenic. Uh, as we said in the beginning, there is mutation, so mutagenic effect. Besides, mutagenic effect means that this mutation can be transmitted to next generation if this cell belongs to that type, which is responsible for reproductive activity of the mankind. That means test uh, spermatozoids or oocytes will be somehow damaged by this kind of power. Mutagenic effect. If there was influence on highly, uh, let's say, quickly developing and growing embryon as well, which belong to this group of danger, like highly high reproductive activity, yes, these cells very quickly dividing. In this case, we talk about teratogenic effect, influence on the embryon. And besides uh, formation and presence of cancers, uh, mainly of bone marrow, but all other areas can be observed as well, because stochastic means possible, that means possibility and risks of its formation will be rising much more bigger if this person was somehow irradiated. Besides to them belong non-fertility to the uh, list of these stochastic effects plus cataract of the eye as well belong to this group of stochastic effect. Non-stochastic effect to them belong another name deterministic effect or another name somatic effect. Oh, there are only two examples of it because they are directly connected only with influences of ionizing irradiation. It's acute radiational illness and uh, chronic radiational illness. Of course, different syndromes can be observed. As we said, more likely there can be damaged uh, these tissues which are dividing very quickly. The critical dose for its development is one gray, which equals 100 rad. 
So this is critical threshold after which already very high possibility of development of acute radiational illness. Of course, there are some individual features of that or other organism because in the same conditions there can be developed some, somebody can have that cancer or not, somebody uh, as well that acute radiational can be in that or other way, in that or other stage uh, or in that or other level of severity can be observed. Uh, in different organisms, but with the same dose accepted, because of course this individual feature there is balance between these two two sides: defensive abilities of the cells and tissues, and the dose which was accepted. But in, in most cases, one gray it's critical dose for development of this non-stochastic or deterministic effect to which belong acute radiational illness. Among clinical forms, regrettably I didn't uh, translate it yet, but I will tell you. So, uh, with smallest dose, between 1 till 10 grays, there will be observance of bone marrow form of acute radiational illness. Dose between 10 till 20 grays, there will be intestinal form of this acute radiational illness. Toxemic or vascular form will be observed uh, between in the range between 20 till 80 grays, and uh, accepted dose which is uh, which exceeds the level of 80 grays, there will be cerebral form. Two last forms, uh, toxemic and cerebral, practically 100% of lethality. They will die from two three hours from the beginning of from getting irradiation till two three days in cerebral form and to one two weeks in toxemic form of course very high rate in mortality they can be observed at intestinal form which can happen uh, in case of mainly abdominal area of irradiation and bone marrow form of course it depends on the individual features of the organism and how it will be able to fight with that consequences because there will be lots of syndromes developed uh, basing mainly on the um, uh, consequences of the damage of bone marrow. As you know, this organ is responsible for production of different cells of our blood, to which belong leukocytes, which are responsible for immunity, to which belong erythrocytes, which are responsible for, transmit, for transmission of the oxygen and supply with this substance and ex exchange of these uh, gases uh, in our tissues and thrombocytes uh, or platelets which are responsible for defending uh, of our uh, circulatory system from losing of blood that is they will be responsible for blocking of for blocking of uh, the bleed development of the bleedings so these syndromes uh, which can be observed in those people to them belong bone marrow, hemorrhagic, infectional complications, of course gastrointestinal form due to damage of this uh, membrane um, of the of this system, syndrome of damage of the nervous system as well can be observed due to the swelling of the brain, general intoxication uh, feelings can be with rising of the temperature uh, oropharyngeal uh, syndrome it's as well due to damage of the mucous covers of digestive tract to which belong this area as well with formation of ulcers the same ulcers will be all over where is observed uh, irradiated area of this epithelial tissue like in esophagus in the stomach inside of bowels as well not only on the skin there will be observed this radiological burns so trophic disorders as well will be due to development uh, of uh, problems of uh, supply of oxygen to the tissues and damages of the capillars. Of course there will be a general weakness, asthenic syndrome and uh, can be problems with breathing due to damage of the tissue of the lungs like because of the presence of this epithelial tissue. Different periods of it can be a uh, period of primary reaction to, uh, which will uh, proceed depending on the uh, accepted dose so up to several days after that there will be stabilizing period uh, of primary reactions as you see there can be different depending on the dose which will be 
uh, after that substituted with latent period, high dead period, during which there has, it looks like, uh, let's say, normalizing of general feeling of these uh, people. But anyway, these changes will be still developing due to suppressing influences of ionizing irradiation on different tissues and si systems to which belong as well uh, bone marrow activity. <coughs> so general weakness will be observed. Uh, losing, decreasing uh, appetite as well. There can be presence of some dyspeptic disorders like diarrhea, feeling of uh, nausea, sleep. You know, let's say problems with the, the sleeping uh, will be observed. Besides, there will be still decreasing uh, of all these types of uh, elements, uh, cell elements in the blood. This period uh, can uh, can be from two to till five weeks and after that there uh, will be developed this highly intensive period of radiational disease when all these syndromes will be highly developing and I, as you see there will be lots of syndromes lots of additional problems for these people which sometimes doesn't let uh, to survive because mainly um, symptomatic therapy can be applied and fight with these complications uh, like bleeding like there can be developed necrotic changes infectional these infectional complications in view of uh, presence of abscesses because defensive borders will be damaged as skin as mucous covers which belong to non-specific immunity borders which helps us to protect ourselves against external dangers of let's say everyday life like different infections right besides uh, Different dystrophic uh, uh, changes can be uh, can be developed. Different bleedings due to decreased level of the platelets, and uh, in the end, there can due to that there can be risk of mortality. Of course, there will be losing of the hair. Uh, radiological burns will be highly intensive, which are very. Uh, hard to be treated because in the in the beginning or in the origins there are destructive necrotic changes due to suppressing uh, influences on the regenerative uh, abilities of the skin and mucous covers and uh, it will be quite dangerous for them to survive and recovering period period uh, after that can last very long time depending on the dose sometimes up to several years in most cases uh, at uh, third fourth degree that is in bone marrow form when there is a uh, high dose uh, between six till ten degrees um, even in small doses sometimes they will be sterilized that means that they will not be able to have children because of the total damage of this function uh, and all uh, cells of the reproductive system will be damaged they will not be able to be to have next generations of course principles of providing i told you already so to hide this is attenuation coefficient uh, depending what area so basement for at least basements of the buildings or special anti-blast shelters which are built from concrete can protect us against this kind of uh, force of course, using of iodine protection, prescribing of iodine during not less than two weeks after getting outside from this uh, area. Using of radio-protecting drugs, which can uh, improve stability uh, of the cell membranes and decrease sometimes different processes inside of the cells. And due to that, they will be defended. Uh, lots of them exist. The most simple is so-called antioxidant uh, substances to which belong vitamin A, vitamin C and vitamin E, for example. Besides, lots of group of substances, very highly specific, which are used for military needs when, um, as well when this any soldier have it in its individual uh, first aid kit. In case of risk of getting into this area of contamination, it's to which belong cystamine, this kind of drug. And of course, food safety, that means 
on the protection of uh, the population to accept these food products from the area which was already contaminated. This is very shortly about